Hello, all, and welcome to this deep dive on Play Data. Have you ever been in a situation where you released an app and realized only days later that you had to replace it? Do you appreciate that the console has great acquisition reports for in app purchases, but doesn't offer a lot of insight for other business models? And have you ever wanted to take a deep dive into your own data? but felt that our statistic pages were not powerful enough. If you're thinking yes to any of these, we have some great news to share. We recognize that every business and every role within a business may have different data needs, and we want to make our data work for all of you. In this talk, you will learn what we've done to help you monitor your production releases, explore new ways to dig into your own data, and gain new business insights. My name is Suzanne. I'm a product manager on Play. And I'll be talking you through the new release dashboard that we launched yesterday. But first, a few introductions. Hi there. My name is Tamsin Taylor. I work for Google Play Business Development in EMEA. Hi, I'm Dario. I'm one of the engineering leads on the Play console. I focus on making our analytics metric timely and useful to our developers. So let's start. Let's start with your app releases and how we're helping you ensure that you don't leave a bad release in production any longer than needed. With our new low latency metrics and the release specific breakdown into your data, we're giving you an hour by hour view into your app release health, out of the box without the need for an SDK. This will allow you to make decisions about the rollout of your release sooner and with more confidence. We've always been ahead of the curve with um, tools to prepare great releases. We have the pre-launch report. We have the alpha and the beta channels. But we haven't yet given you the data to monitor your production release as it happens. We now give you a product that allows you to look at the core release metrics in one view, the release dashboard. Within a couple of hours of your release entering the production track, you will see data for that release on the dashboard. So when you push a new release, you obviously care about crashes. The crashes that we used to show were those where a user proactively reported a crash. But we also now have device reported crashes. And that's the metric that you see here. Unless a user opted out during the setup of their device, all crashes are reported automatically, which should mean a lot more data for you. The other metric you should really care about is ANRs, application not responding. These are events where the Android operating system reports that your app becomes unresponsive for five seconds or more. Now, if on the crash card you click on View Clusters, or on the ANR card, you click on View ANRs, you'll be able to see if your release introduced any new crashes or ANR that you should care about. And you can ex explore the new crash and ANR metrics there as well. So to learn more about the new crash and ANR metrics, and to learn exactly 10 secrets <laughs> about health <laughs> metrics, please come back to this same stage at 5.30 PM today to see Fergus, Ricardo, and Joe talk. Now back to the release dashboard. So I showed you crashes and ANRs. Releases aren't all about app health, though. You also want to see ratings and reviews specific to your latest version. When the average rating for your current release is well below that of your overall rating, you may want to start looking into your one and two star reviews to see what's going wrong and possibly even move on to halting your release. But what if you could also see low latency install and uninstall events that are specific to your release? And what if you could know how many uninstalls came from updated devices? Are you losing existing customers because your new version doesn't perform? Installs broken down by new installs and updates can tell a powerful story too, though. Have enough users updated for me to push my stage rollout to the next stage? As I've started hinting, it's not all about a single metric. Your crash tool 
may warn you if you get a huge spike. Your PM may tell you if your ratings suddenly drop. But what about subtle but significant changes across the board? Would you ever notice if you didn't see them all in the same place? Maybe your crashes go up, but not to a point where you would hold your release just yet. But your ratings are down. And if you look further, your uninstalls are becoming to, starting to trend above average. The combined data may tell you that this is not early stage noise, but actually a real problem that you need to investigate. So the context provided by this holistic review by this holistic view is precisely how play data will help you make decisions sooner and with more confidence. So, so far, you've seen a bunch of metrics that tell you a lot about your production release, both when looked at in isolation, what are my ratings doing, and together, so what are my ANRs doing to my uninstalls or to my ratings? I've kept one of the most powerful features from you, though, and that's comparison. During user studies we ran for the release dashboard, we've, we noticed that virtually every participant mentioned that the success of a release is measured relative to the success of a previous release. Everybody has their own idea of what's an acceptable number of crashes and an acceptable rating. So release dashboard, when you open it later today, has a selector at the top that allows you to pick a past release to compare your current release against. So here's what comparison would look like for uninstall events and for crashes. The power of comparing is that it gives you even more signals to increase your confidence. You don't only have your crashes. You don't only have the impact that your ANRs are having on your ratings. But you can also see how these metrics um, compare against the previous successful release. And Jam City developer of big hits like Panda Pop, Cookie Jam, and Genies and Gems, confirms exactly those notions. Quicker insight into success or problems, and comparing crash and ANR metrics against the previous release to see if they need to start looking into newly introduced crashes. And Wish, a very popular shopping app, say that they can now ramp up their releases faster and with more confidence and respond to issues more intelligently. The head of product also specifically mentioned that comparing ratings across releases gave very important qualitative feedback, which ties back to what I mentioned before about not focusing on app health alone. Right, that's a release dashboard that makes play data work for you in low latency. So go look for it in the play console when you next push a new version out. It is the new topmost item under release management. You'll be confident sooner and you have fewer users spending um, time looking at a bad app release version. Thank you, Suzanne. So when we think about the app development lifecycle, clearly the release is a critical point. I don't think anyone disagrees. But once you have your app in production and you're happy with it, you probably want to drive lots of new and valuable installs, right? Now. Given that you've all heard about the new release dashboard, I have confidence when you leave I.O., you'll be able to have a great release of your app. And once you have your app live, what are the four questions you should be asking yourself to grow your business? You should be asking, which marketing channels are driving my most valuable users? Which countries are they coming from? Are my install and buy conversion rates actually good? And which channels are bringing me my most loyal users? So why is this important? And what am I going to tell you? Well, I'll get on to that in a second. So in my role, I talk to developers every single day. There's probably some of you in the audience who I speak to regularly. And what I hear you say is that you need to know how effective your marketing channels are for attracting and retaining new valuable users. I hear you say that you need more data to make the right decision on where you spend your money and where you spend your time and effort to optimize your growth strategies. Now, you may already know this, but in case you don't, a couple of years ago, we launched the User Acquisition Report. 
To remind you, the user acquisition report shows you how many people are going to your Play Store listing page. Of those, how many people install your app? And of those, how many people buy and buy again? You can cut this report by five main channels, the Play Store, Google AdWords, Google Search, third-party referrers, and track channels. Now, since last I.O., we've launched two improvements to this report just to make it more useful for you and help you with your growth strategies. But first, I want to touch on track channels and why you should really be using these today. So one of the most powerful features of the user acquisition report is the ability to track and see acquisition broken down by UTM tag. Now, UTM tag lets you identify a link you've used to drive traffic to your store listing page. Any link can use UTM tags, your social shares, your websites, even other apps. And by tagging these links, you can see all of your traffic broken down by unique identifier. Why is this important? Well, if you're going to spend money on a campaign, you probably want to know how it's performing. And this allows you to see exactly which link is contributing to your most valuable users. It's really powerful. You can apply this link to anything you create to track the contribution that that specific link has had to your growth success. So UTM tags are great for planned campaigns. But when I speak to developers, a lot of them tell me that the majority of their traffic actually comes organically through the Play Store. I can see some nodding. Now, you may remember I told you we'd made two improvements to the user acquisition report. So the first one is we've added country breakdown to the user acquisition uh, traffic report. And this is really helpful because, as you may have heard earlier today and or yesterday, we now have 2 billion Android active devices across the world. So you, this report helps to identify where your unrealized opportunity is for international expansion and domination. Now, let me share with you a case study of a partner who's used this to their benefit. Concrete Software is a Minneapolis-based games company. Perhaps like you in the audience or on the live stream, they run a really lean operation. They've got about 30 people. So getting the right information about their business quickly so they can act on it is pretty crucial. About a year ago, Concrete Software were using the user acquisition reports for their game Arctic Cat, which is a snowmobile game, obviously set in a snowy landscape. And they could see that their install conversion was a little bit lower than what they'd expected. <coughs> when we launched Country Breakdown, instantly they could see why this was the case. What they saw was that countries in cold climates with snow had a five times greater install conversion than warmer climates that did not have snow, such as Brazil, Indonesia, etc. So suddenly they realized they should be concentrating their optimization on these cold climate countries, which you can see that they've done by increasing their install 25% for these countries by using store listings uh, experiments. So now they know where to, uh, where to um, target their spend to get the best return on investment. So one thing you've told us, and, and I heard this quite a lot from partners, was that while you think the user acquisition report is great for understanding your business, I kept getting asked, but is this actually good? How much opportunity exists to drive my acquisition even further? So late last year, we launched Peer Benchmarks. Peer Benchmarks help you see how your app compares to similar apps in the same category uh, who use the same monetization model. So these Peer Benchmarks can be seen in the uh, user acquisition channel and in the country breakdown channel. And this is really helpful for three reasons. Number one, it shows you exactly where you need to focus your improvement efforts for your conversion. Secondly, it can show you where you can make the business case to invest more in acquisition. And thirdly, it can show you where you can simply celebrate your team's success. So let me share with you a couple of partners who've used this data to, for their advantage. Now, you may be familiar with Viber. They're a communications app, and they operate in a pretty competitive market. So it's really important that they use all the levers at their disposal to increase the top of the funnel and get more users to install their app. 
once we launch peer benchmarks, Viber could finally see what good is. And they knew what goals to set themselves to reach for their in-store conversion. Using this report, Viber were able to identify countries that were below the peer benchmark. One such example was the UK and the US. Similarly, you know, they seem like sister countries, right? They both speak English. But as Viber discovered, in fact, user behavior was quite different. And they saw that their UK in-store conversion was much lower than the peer set. This immediately allowed them to jump on the problem and resolve it using store listing experiments, testing the image, logo, descriptions, to bring it back up to par. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Star Wars franchise. And you may also be familiar with the EA game Galaxy Heroes, which launched a, a while ago. What they noticed was that there were lots of people coming to their page store listing, but not as many were installing the app as they expected. Once we launched peer benchmarking, EA were able to see that actually the problem was not the game, but that the category that the game sat in had a lower conversion than other categories in which EA have games. And this led them to think, if they could change the perception and the display of the game, could they increase conversion? So peer benchmarking gave EA the ability to think not only in terms of category, but also country, and has prompted them to pivot the positioning of the game to increase conversion. It's had a profound impact on the way that they approach top of funnel marketing. With this, they're able to create unique assets for different categories and different countries to increase conversion. So if you're a games company or you use in-app purchase, you might be thinking, this is fantastic. I'm going to go home and dive into my data and find ways I can improve. But how many of you here in the audience, and you can put your hand up if you're also watching the live stream, have a subscription model or an ad-funded model or an e-commerce model? Fantastic. So there's quite a few of you. Version 1 of the user acquisition report was really useful for everyone, but perhaps geared more towards developers with in-app purchase model. But like you here in the room today, the majority of you put your hand up. We know there are other really successful business models where you really care about building long-term user relationships, right? So today, I'm very excited to announce the launch of version 2 of the funnel, which has been built specifically with businesses like yours in mind who care about user retention. The re report shows retention periods, which is a critical metric for understanding which channels are bringing in your most loyal users. These retained installers are people who have your app installed on at least one of their devices. This is your retained install base. So this, and you can see the percentages, will show you what the opportunity is to increase your user retention using techniques like notifications, email, or just increasing your quality. Better yet, one of my favorites is the ability to export this data via CSV. So now you'll be able to extract your retained user. I can see people clapping. It's great. You'll be able to extract your retained user, your install and buy conversion, and your peer benchmarks to help you manage your business better and look for ways to improve. Now, I work a lot with subscription partners from the news industry through to health and fitness. And they are always asking me for more data. And since subscriptions are a growing and important business model, I'm really happy to let you know that we've built a report specifically for your business. Now, as much as I would like to, I'm not going to ruin the surprise. If you'd like to learn more about the subscription report, come back here 10.30 AM tomorrow morning to hear more about that. So in summary, I know from today, you're going to go away, and you'll look at your app, and you'll be able to see which channels are driving your most valuable users, which countries they're coming from. And you'll be able to see where are the opportunities to increase my install and buy conversion, and how can I increase my user retention. All of these reports are here to help you optimize your growth strategies, not just for installs, but for long-term value and business success. Regardless of the way you monetize, we believe the acquisition reports are there for you to help grow your business. Thanks, Dantin. So 
In addition to the release dashboard and the user acquisition report, which give you unique insights into your data. As you know, in the Play Console, we also have more specialized dashboards for specific use cases, like crashes, or Android vitals, or revenue, and so on. But we understand that not all businesses are alike. And each of you might care about different metrics and might care about doing analysis in ways that we cannot predict. So we know many of you use our statistics page, but we also know that sometimes for certain analysis, you have to download the CSV exports and then craft your own analysis using spreadsheets or other external tool. And we understand why. How, for example, could you understand uh, whether last year Black Friday sales went better or worse of this year Black Friday sales, right? Or how could you compare or find correlations between two different metrics, such as ratings and crashes? So if I take a step back and I think about our old statistics page, uh, there were a number of issues you raised and you asked us to fix. It was sometimes slow to load. The date ranges you could pick were inflexible. There was no possibility of selecting multiple metrics. And also, and this was an important point, the latency of the availability of the data was often insufficient. So we listened to your feedback, and we brought it into our product with a bunch of the launches we had yesterday. It begins with a new statistics page, and I would like to introduce this to you today. So here is how it looks. At the first glance, you can see that the interface is much nicer and more polished than before. It has been designed from the ground up from our design, material design specifications. With this launch, we are also including some new metrics in the statistics page, such as, for example, the revenue metrics and also the install, update, and uninstall events, which are also available on the release dashboard that Suzanne presented before. Let me walk you through some exciting features of this page. First, you can now choose any date range you want to visualize your data. A nice date picker is available on the top right corner of the page. You can, there are some pre-selected time, time ranges, but you can also pick a custom one you want to visualize. Previously, we only, we only had three, if I remember correctly, date ranges uh, fixed that always ended up today. But now, you, by being able to choose any date ranges, you can do some analysis, such as look at Q4 of 2016 or January uh, of last year. In addition, when you select a date range, the new statistics page, by default, will also overlay a comparison of that metrics of that date range with its most recent history. So for example, if you pick the last week of the, the previous week of the, the last week of data, you will also see data relative to the previous week overlaid on the chart as a dotted line. If you hover on the chart, uh, a useful tooltip will give you more data about specific data points, such as the exact date or also how they compare numerically. So this feature will allow you to do one of the comparisons that I was mentioning before, for example. You could compare last year Black Friday sales to this year very easily. So our partners at Expedia told us that they love this feature. They were actually able to do very quickly and at a glance year-over-year -year or quarter-over-quarter -quarter comparison analysis real quick. And they said that there is no other app analytics tool that they know of that does this so easily and seamlessly. Another cool feature is the ability of compare to different metrics. If you configure your report by clicking the Configure Report button, you can now select an additional metric to compare to so that you can spot correlation of lack of correlation between different metrics, such as installer and revenue, or as you can see here, crashes and ratings. On the chart, the two different metrics will be plotted with two different colors. Um, and as you can see, the date range comparison will still be available, and the tooltip will, be, um, will include information about both metric and, and different date ranges. So, this feature will allow you to do quickly, to spot quickly, correlation or lack of correlation between different metrics. We've spoken to Move Incorporated um, that had early access to the statistics page for their apartment and home rental search app. They were able to spot correlation between crashes and uninstall. 
effectively showing the impact of app quality on the audience. So now think about this. Maybe many of you have a hard time prioritizing fixing technical depth over building new features, right? But once you have this data in hand, you can now build a case to work on that. So this is how you can use this data. Next, for some of our metrics available, such as the install, update, and uninstall events, you can now select to see hourly data instead of daily when visualizing this. Now, reducing the latency of our metrics has been of a, one of your loudest concerns. And we've taken that really seriously. We've worked really hard on that. And I'm happy to announce that for the metrics that are available, that are available hourly, you should ex expect them to be updated within a few hours. In fact, if you log on the Play Console right now for this metric, you should already see data for this morning. The hourly data will allow you to observe hour by hour trends and also to uh, do analysis that were more difficult to do before, for example, in case of offline events like a TV ad and understanding how this affects your metric, your install metric, for example. As you can see here, the comparison features are still available also when you look at the data uh, at an hourly granularity. Last but not least, if you remember, the previous stats page uh, used to show you the top 10 uh, results for certain breakdowns, such as countries and device. If you wanted to dig deeper into data, you had to download the CSV export and, and observe, the, uh, observe those. Well, we improved the situation significantly in the new statistics page. You still have the top 10 results, but you can now search for any breakdown. And as you can see, the table will also show a numerical comparison between different metrics if you have selected so. And in addition, you can select specific breakdowns up to two. And, and see them plotted on the chart. And again, as before, all the comparison features I described before are still available. So you can do comparison between multiple metrics, between multiple date ranges, at an hourly granularity for specific breakdowns. So Jacob, the CEO of PlayLab, who sh should be in the room today, <laughs> OK. Um, so they are a game developer company from Thailand. And he told us that he loved to have the possibility of comparing multiple metrics at a glance and without going through spreadsheet and also seeing per device or per country comparison. So the new stats page allows you to do more sophisticated analysis much more quickly than before. So to summarize, the new statistics page is a powerful and versatile tool um, to analyze data and to achieve quickly what you could only achieve before by downloading the data and using our ex external tools or uh, ad hoc analysis. Um, we are publishing new metrics, such as revenue and install, update, and uninstall events. Some of these metrics will be available hourly. And for these metrics, you should also expect a much lower latency than before. So I hope you will enjoy using these features for your business as much as we enjoy building them for you. Thank you. And back to Suzanne. Well, thank you for taking us through the new statistics based Dario and for the business reporting walkthrough, Tamsin. So, I'd like to wrap up with some final words. We were very pleased to announce all these features here today. With the release dashboard, we give you visibility into the health of your release. With the acquisition reports, you can see how efficient your marketing channels are for ad additional uh, business models. And finally, with the new statistics pages, we're giving you a much more flexible way to look at your own data. Together, these features make Play Data work even harder for you and help you build successful apps on Play. So thank you very much.